Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton and from the Flourish Academy, this is episode 411 and we're talking about the exposure triangle today by way of a story. So one of our favorite shows to watch as a family is Airplane Disasters. And not because we fear air travel, we actually love it, it's because we find it fascinating to study and understand why airplanes crash because typically about eight to ten things have to go wrong in order for a major airliner to crash so do you happen to remember United Airways flight 173 you probably don't because this was about 40 years ago but it crashed just short of Portland and it was pilot error excuse me it was fuel exhaustion due to pilot error because a lack of situational awareness that was the final investigation on the crash so essentially what happened is they were landing the plane and there were a whole bunch of errors and warnings that came up in the cockpit and the pilot was so consumed with these errors that he aborted the landing obviously which was the right thing to do and he was circling the airport in order to diagnose the problem he and his entire crew all missed the fact that they were extremely low on fuel and the airplane crashed because they ran out of gas. They ran out of gas because he had what they refer to as hyper focus. So he was hyper focused on all of these warning lights and bells and sirens, not paying attention to the fuel and the plane crashed and there was loss of life. It was very tragic. Luckily there were survivors as well. But the point in how this relates to photography is that I have noticed when I am teaching the exposure triangle, we're talking here about ISO, shutter speed, and aperture that many people I work with, so this is just not one occurrence, it happens all the time, which is why I'm bringing it to you now on video, but many times people pick out one of those components and they tend to get hyper focused on it and they ignore all of the other things, that is they lack situational awareness due to this hyper focus. Okay, let me give you some examples. So in the past few work, weeks, I worked with a photographer who was hyper focused on choosing the correct aperture. She wanted to make sure that everybody was in focus. So she picks her aperture based on what I've taught, which is how many eyes are looking at me, how many people do I have, how many rows, how many stacks do I have, and selecting the appropriate aperture to make sure there's enough depth of field to ensure that everyone is in focus. Now my general rule is if it's only one person in the frame, then I can shoot whatever I want. You could shoot wide open, you could shoot anything. But as you add more people, if they are looking at the camera, then you wanna make sure that you have an appropriate aperture. Okay, she was shooting in aperture priority mode. She was doing all of these things as people were looking at her. She was changing her aperture to make sure that she had enough focus and she was in aperture priority doing so. But she was hyper focused on her aperture. So what happened was her ISO was at about 400, which was too, too low for the situation and her shutter speed was 1 15th of a second. So she shot a series of images at 1 15th of a second, which means they were completely blurry as a result of motion blur, but she wasn't paying attention to that at all. She was so focused on that aperture and making sure she had enough focus that she actually ended up without a photo because they were completely blurry. There's a lot of things that we can fix, but we cannot fix motion blur and we cannot fix out of focus. We can fix ISO, certainly, you know, great noise, but we can't fix motion blur. Okay, so that's one situation. I had another client that became hyper focused on shooting at really low ISOs. So she wanted clean images. She hates grain. She didn't want anything to do with any of this digital noise so she sets her ISO at 100 and I can't remember shooting mode I want to say she went into manual mode she went into manual mode set her ISO at 100 set her aperture based on what she needed which was appropriate and then wanted a fast shutter speed to freeze the motion so she took these photos in a fairly dimly lit environment and all of the photos were almost completely black there was actually no photo and there was certainly no photo to save and she was pretty upset obviously understandably because she wanted these clean images but at ISO 100 she, she was just determined it has to be ISO 100 well 
you have to have a photo. So you have to look at the back of your camera and you have to make sure that you have a decently exposed photo. Now I would think that she was the only one doing that because it sounds like it should be common sense, but it's not because I see a lot of photographers who show me the back of their camera and the photo is significantly under or overexposed and they think that that doesn't matter. And it does. Your goal as a photographer is to get a photo that is sharp, in focus and decently exposed. exposed. Certainly, we can correct issues under or over a little bit, but you can't take a photo of ISO 100 and get a completely black image and expect to save it. I dare you to try it. Take a photo this evening in your home at ISO 100 with a fast shutter speed and whatever aperture and try to bring it up in Lightroom. You're gonna see noise and grain because when you have to pull something up 85 stops, you're going to see all kind of imperfections in the image. So obviously that's not going to work. And then in the third example, I have a client who is hyper focused on shutter speed. So she goes into shutter priority and she puts her shutter speed at one five hundredth of a second because she's a little bit shaky. She wants to make sure she gets sharp photos. She doesn't really pay attention to the ISO, what's happening with the lens and the aperture. And these photos are sharp, but again, they're also Mm, almost indiscernibly black. They're so dark. So there's not an image there. And she said, well, I wanted a fast shutter speed because you said a fast shutter speed produces a sharp photo. Now I have noticed that many of you will take my words and bring them back to me by saying things like, you said a low ISO produces a cleaner image. You said a faster shutter speed produces a sharper image. And this is all true. These are all things that I have indeed said, but you have to understand that these components work together. You cannot compartmentalize them and then hyper focus on one and expect to get an image. They all have to work together and you have to find the balance that's appropriate for the current situation. So it completely depends on the lighting environment. Yes, in an ideal and perfect world, I would be shooting at a low ISO with a fast shutter speed based on the aperture that I need and everything would be fantastic. But that's just not the case. In my circumstances, I always need more light. So I'm typically trying to to balance, okay, how far or how comfortable do I feel pushing my ISO up? And then how far am I okay slowing down my shutter speed to get the right amount of light? This happens to me oftentimes in churches where I'm not permitted to use flash. So a lot of times I'll be at ISO 1600 or 2000 and I'll have that shutter speed hovering around 180th or 160th. Yes, these are risky, risky settings because you have to be very careful, but you cannot hyper focus on one of these areas and expect to get a good image. Your goal is to balance all of these settings and get a sharp image that is decently exposed. That is the goal. And if any of this is confusing to you or you're like, wait, I'm not, I'm not sure how that all makes sense. Don't worry. You're in good company. There's a lot of people that are still learning to balance all of these settings. There's a course on the Flourish Academy, understanding the exposure triangle. It's a super quick win. It's an inexpensive course. I'm going to post the link before below. I have had seasoned veterans go through that course and learn things and say, wow, I just didn't think of it that way or I, I, didn't, I didn't take that into consideration. So I encourage you to check that out if you are having any issues at all. But remember the goal. Remember the goal. You have to balance these settings. The image has to be well exposed and it has to be sharp. I hope that you found this useful via airline disasters. I'll see you in the next video.